smell like, well, I love fire. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. And wake, good morning. And get, and wake up for tired prayer. <laughs> wake up for tired prayer. You can get a copy of morning prayer in the description. No, tired and we begin on page 47. Of tired prayer. O oh Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God rules over all the earth. O oh come, let us worship. The Lord is in his holy temple. O oh come, let us worship. The Lord is our strength and our refuge. O oh, come, let us worship. The Lord is our light and our life. O oh, come, let us worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let, let us, us shout, shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. salvation. Let, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. We pray that your hearts and your minds and your ears would be open to the proclamation of God's word. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At the time, Eli, whose eyesight had began to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not gone out yet, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, here I am. He ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you. Go lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called Samuel again. Samuel, Samuel. I, Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said again, I did not call you, my son, lie down again. But now Samuel did not know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for I am your ser for your servant is listening. So Samuel went down and lay down in his peace. Now the Lord came and stood there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Our psalm today is number 139. O oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I am going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. 
You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. This reading is from the book of 1 Corinthians. You say, I am allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. And even though I am allowed to do anything, I must not become a slave to anything. You say, food was made for the stomach and the stomach for food. This is true, though someday God will do away with both of them. But you can't say that our bodies were made for sexual immorality. They were made for the Lord, and the Lord cares about our bodies. And God will raise us from the dead by his power, just as he raised our Lord from the dead. Don't you realize that your bodies are actually parts of Christ? Should a man take his body, which is part of Christ, and join it to a prostitute? Never. And don't you realize that if a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one body with her? For the scriptures say, the two are united into one. But the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. For God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to the Gospel of St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsidia, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law, and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Peter said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said to him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hey everybody, thank you for joining us for morning prayer. Thank you for joining me for this reflection. This morning we're going to be speaking about um, some Old Testament scripture from the first book of Samuel, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse. It's the story of Samuel's first call. Now Samuel is a young man. He is the servant of, of Eli, who's like the chief priest, the chief prophet for Israel. And, and Samuel is his, his, his student. Right, Samuel serves him. He learns from him. Samuel is, is being prepared for ministry. And one night, Eli is sleeping. Samuel's sleeping. 
and Samuel hears a voice call out, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel responds, here I am. And he jumps up and he runs out to see Eli. What do you want? And Eli says, I don't want anything. I didn't call you. Samuel goes back to sleep. Here's the voice again, Samuel, Samuel. Here I am, he yells out. So he jumps up and he runs off to see Eli again. What can I get for you? Eli says, nothing. I didn't call you. Samuel goes back to bed. Now, Eli, at this point, he has told him, it's not me calling. It's the Lord calling. So the next, if it happens again, this is what you say. And so Samuel, he goes back to bed. Eli goes back to sleep. And Samuel once again hears, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel, this time, staying right where he is, responds, here I am. Your, your servant, Lord, is listening. And then God tells him everything that God wanted to tell him. Samuel hears his purpose in life. He hears his mission. And he also gets some bad news about his, about his friend and his mentor, Eli. The story goes on from there. Samuel, eventually, is the one who, he, well, he becomes the prophet in Israel. And he goes on to be, he's the one that calls Saul forth as king. And then ultimately also anoints David after Saul's huge failure as king. So what does this have to do with us? Well, for what it's worth, this is pretty much uh, a word for word description of, of how I go about my ministry. I hear something, I see something, and I jump at it. I rush right forward. Yes, I'm going to fix it. Thank you for showing me this, Lord. I'm going to jump in and I'm going to take care of it. All right, that's what Samuel did. I, Samuel, Samuel, yeah. And he jumps off and he goes to see Eli. He doesn't he doesn't take a breath. He doesn't pause for a second. Now, Samuel, he doesn't do it because he's lazy and he doesn't do it because he's evil. He, he does this because he's, he's, he loves Eli. He wants to serve Eli. He wants the best for Eli. Eli, I think at this point, he's blind and, and Samuel wants to be there for him. So he's jumping up in order to answer the call that he thinks is coming from Eli. You know, most of us, when we answer our call in life, we're not... You know, we, we don't do it because we're being evil. We don't do it because we're, we're misguided. We don't do it because of any ill motive. We jump up and we respond to the need we perceive because we want to make change, because we want to offer ourselves, because we want to show our love, because we want to improve our world. But in this story, what I always hear every time I read it is, just listen. Just wait a second. I've got more to tell you. This is just me calling you. You don't have to jump. You don't have to do anything. Just listen. And I've tried to apply this to my life where there's a, a, a need that it, I, I perceive a need. I'm, I hear a need. I'm shown something. I'm, I'm offered something. I'm called into something. And rather than jumping in, trying to solve it right away, trying to fix it right away. Okay, just take a second, Ed. There's more coming. Let's watch. Let's listen, let's study, let's explore, let's ask some questions, right, let's, let's dig deep into this, let's, let's experience this in every way we possibly can, looking for what it is that God wants to tell us, looking for the entirety of what it is that God wants to tell us. I mean, we do a lot of good when we jump in. We do, just like Samuel, he was there for Eli, we can jump in and we can be there for people. We can jump in and we can be there for a cause. We can jump in and we can be there offering a solution, offering ourselves in whatever capacity we can offer. But if we listen, then oftentimes we're shown not only that we're called to offer ourselves, but how God envisions us offering ourselves. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And I pray that as you hear God calling you to mission, as you hear God calling you to action, you'll take just a little while. Yes, Lord, I'm here. And then you'll listen. 
You'll watch. You'll explore. And then you will leap into action. Amen. Let us confess the faith of our baptisms together as we say, I believe, I believe in God, God the, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join with me together before the Lord saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for your many, many gifts to us, for the love which brings us together, for the earth which provides for our needs, for the new life you have given us in Jesus Christ. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We thank you for our Christian family, especially our local, our local group of Christians that supports and encourages us. And we ask you for grace to grow in your love, especially with those that we find it difficult to love. Lord, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. We also want to pray for our YouTube family, the internet people all around the globe, for peace. Lord, for your perspective, for power to keep doing their good work in their communities. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray to you for our world, for all its cares and needs, and for all who lead and care for us. And we want to remember again, especially before you, the United States, and our friends and brothers and sisters there, for the turmoil, for the climbing COVID numbers, and for all those who have died. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray to you for those in need, for the sick and the lonely, for the isolated, the hurt, the frightened, for those whose lives right now don't feel meaningful, and for those who are living without hope. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those we love who have died. We pray for those we did not love, who have died, that you will surround them with your care and love. And you will surround us who are sorely tested by these deaths. Surround us with your care and love, your comfort, your hope. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray to you for one another asking you to bless us, our friends, our relatives, bless the places where we work and study, bless our home, our homes and our, our life together. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And let us remember now before God our selfish ways, the things we have done wrong, the sorrows we have caused, the love we have not shown. Most merciful Father, Forgive us our sins against you and against each other. Strengthen us to overcome our weaknesses, that we may live in love as you would have us live. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Our collect of the day, Almighty God, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world. May your people illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. Amen. And as we remember all that God has given us and all that we're able to give in return, we pray, living God, you have revealed your Son as the Messiah. May we hear his word and follow it and live as children of light. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Our time of prayer today is ending. Our time of service is just beginning. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for being here today. We will see you again next week, if not sooner. Soon. Sooner. Soon. God bless. Bye-bye.